Kare Shalom everyone. Welcome to the Bible journey. In this journey, which has just started, we are going to have a look at the book of Genesis. This is season one and we are in episode number two. And we are going to look at Genesis 2 today. So please come and join me and let's read through Genesis 2 and then we will unpack some of the verses. Let's read. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation, so he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, because it was the day when he rested from all his work of creation. This is the account of the creation of the heavens and the earth. When the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, neither wild plants nor grains were growing in, on the earth. For the Lord God had not yet sent rain to water the earth, and there were no people to cultivate the soil. Instead, springs came up from the ground and watered all the land. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had made. The Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground, trees that were beautiful and that produced delicious fruit. In the middle of the garden, he placed the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed from the land of Eden, watering the garden and then dividing into four branches. The first branch, called the Pishon, flowed around the entire land of Havila, where gold is found. The gold of that land is exceptionally pure. Aromatic resin and onyx stone are also found there. The second branch, called the Gihon, flowed around the entire land of Cush. The third branch, called the Tigris, flowed east of the land of Ashur. The fourth branch is called the Euphrates. The Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, You may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So the Lord God formed from the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would call them, and the man chose a name for each one. He gave names to all the livestock, all the birds of the sky, and all the wild animals. But still, there was no helper just right for him. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. At last, the man exclaimed, This is bone of my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman, because she was taken from man. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. In Genesis 2, we find a few major things that happen. 
God tells us about his day of rest. We learn how the earth was watered and nourished. Then we hear how God formed man. The next part tells us about the layout of the Garden of Eden and how the man named all the animals while God wanted him to give him a helper. However, none of the animals were quite right for the man. Finally, God used part of the man to create a woman and he placed them together to become one. There's so much debate about the first chapters of Genesis. Many people dispute the creation account and there has been some serious divisions among God's people about this. Let us now look at what the Word of God says about his creation. When God had finished his work, he rested. He does not tell us to rest on a Sunday or on a Friday. He only commands us to rest. This became part of the Ten Commandments given to Moses in Exodus 20. The Fourth Commandment states this, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. So resting isn't a choice, it's a command. Aren't you glad that you can rest in God for at least one day out of seven? This is a day, any day, in which you can devote your time to Him and recharge your batteries for the following six days. If you are an emergency worker, for example, you cannot always rest on a Sunday or from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. Some people have struggled because of this. Please don't let it upset you. You can choose any day out of the seven to rest in the Lord. Remember that Jesus said in Mark 2 verse 27 and 28, The Sabbath was made to meet the needs of the people and not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath. The day of rest therefore is made so that you can take time off and it can fall on any day of the week. The account of the Garden of Eden in Genesis is meant to be a true account of a real place on earth. The garden is described in detail and the four rivers were real places that existed in the time of creation and the time when the first people read Genesis. Two of those rivers are very familiar to us even today, the Tigris and the Euphrates. So then this part of the Genesis account cannot be disputed as it describes real places. God creates man to look after the garden and to enjoy its bountiful supplies. God allows man to roam freely in the garden and eat his fill of the fruit he provided. However, he gives man one specific instruction. Just one. He may not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, because then he will die. Now we will talk about this specific one in chapter 3. With every day of creation, God declared that it was good. And yet even within all the beauty and abundance, something was missing for man. He had no real companion. And this is where God said something curious. He said in verse 18 that it is not good for man to be alone. Somehow God saw that even in this perfect creation, something wasn't good. So to make things good again, God created the woman from the man and at the end of chapter 1, it says that he had looked at all of creation and saw that it was very good. When God created the woman, he did an interesting thing. He did not create her from the same dust as the man. He could have, 
but he chose to take a part from man and form the woman in that way. Why would God do that? The woman and the man were supposed to be united like pieces of a perfect puzzle. They were made from one and are supposed to stay as one. Therefore, the man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. When the man and woman were created, they did not know what sin was, as sin has not existed for them. Even though they were naked, they were not ashamed. Their innocence made them unashamed. They had nothing to hide. They lived freely in a beautiful garden, enjoying the gifts of God. And yet, something went horribly wrong. In the next episode, we will read through Genesis 3 and see where it all went downhill and get back to our question of who done it. Thank you very much for joining me on my journey and I hope that it was fruitful to you and that you have learned something from the Word of God. Have a blessed week and I hope to see you next time. Bye con Dios.